This one's pretty rough. Articat 300, two by four. Plastics aren't too bad on it. Missing the side panel over here. Tires are a little bit bald. Not horrible. All right, check this beauty out. This is a 1998 Articat 300 two by four. Unfortunately, it's not the four by four version, but uh, yeah, so I picked this one up with the four by four version from a couple videos ago. And uh, this one's in rougher shape than that one. So this should be very exciting. So what's kind of weird is this one has the exact same issues as the other one that we worked on. So it's really, really weird. Um, this one's got a worse seat cover though. This one's actually um, ripped up pretty good. Let's get this off of here. So this seat cover is kind of crap on this one. This one was also sitting outside for probably a couple of years. It looks like it was last registered in 2019 though, so that gives us hope. Um, the wiring on this one is all messed up. Let's get the back fenders off and then we'll look at that wiring and see how bad it is. Get these back fenders off here. See the wiring is all messed up on this one as well. It's not as bad as the other one though, it doesn't look like. You can see just a couple frayed wires, so we might be able to repair that. I'm not sure why they melted like that. It's just really odd to me. There's just some melted wires. I'm guessing what happened was a mouse chewed through them, and then they grounded out to the frame, and then um, they just melted being hot it's kind of what I'm guessing but really this one only has this wire that's bad this one this one this one this one so basically the same part that was on the the other one that was bad um, it looks like the CDI wires are actually fine just have to reconnect them and then down here this plug looks like it's fried a little bit then down here this wire is fried this one's fried and this one's fried so at least none of this stuff is fried. So, I guess what we're gonna do first, uh, same with the other one we did, is uh, check for compression. This one does turn over. Quick pull it a couple times. It does turn over smoothly. Before I go any further though, uh, with turning it over, I do wanna see what's in the air box. The air box on the other one we looked at was just horrible. So let's just see what's in this one. What is going to be in this one? Ooh, different stuff. There's an air filter in there too. A bunch of leaves are in there. Oh boy, and a bunch of nuts too. That's pretty rough. <laughs> oh man. Air filter is actually probably usable. Yikes, that is really bad in there. Let's get the vacuum out and suck that up.
All right, mouse nest is out of there. That's good. All right, so this thing was sitting outside in the rain for like a couple years without the spark plug in the cylinder, so that's not good. We're gonna lube up the cylinder and then uh, we'll do a compression test. A little bit of penetrating oil. And then just a little bit of normal oil. Good. All right, let's perform a compression test on this thing. Hopefully we have compression. We're looking for over 100 PSI. We're gonna do throttle open. It needs 100 PSI to start for sure, so. Let's see if we can get over 100. The last one we had that started had 130, I believe. So for over 100, we should be good. <laughs> Just blew a bunch of nuts out the exhaust. There's tons of them in there. Oh, can't even pull this thing. Feels like really good compression. There's a decompression release on this. I don't know what it's working at. I just can't open the throttle while pulling it because I can't even pull it. Oh, same thing, 130. So this one should run just as well. You can hear the nuts flying out of the exhaust over here. Look at them all. So it's probably packed full of nuts too. But anyway, um, I did the wiring as well. And everything wired up perfectly. Except for this right here. Which is really weird. So I don't know what that goes to. There's nothing in the wiring harness that uh, that would plug into. So I think what we're gonna do is hook up the battery and just see if anything lights up. I'm wondering if somebody put a new front wiring harness in here. And it didn't match up with the other one. Not too sure. All right, this quad also came with a missing coil. So I went ahead and ordered one up off of Amazon. 1PZ. This brand's usually a little bit better than the Chinese stuff. Let's see what's in here. We've got the coil and CDI. Oh, and a spark plug. Woohoo. So we'll mount the coil up. And we'll see if that works. The coil actually goes right here. This goes down here. This mounts up like that. And this wire goes on it like that. That mount right there. And then we gotta get the ground. Oop. Huh. That's weird, there's no battery hooked up. Why would it spark? That was odd, wasn't it? We'll hook that up and then we'll... <laughs> we'll attempt to uh, hook this thing up to a battery. Alright, time to hook this thing up. Hopefully... Nothing uh, sparks or anything here. You got positive. Actually, we're gonna hook up negative first. And we'll see if 
got any sparks when we're touching it. Nothing yet. No melting taking place yet. That's a good sign. Let's see what happens here. No lights or anything. Nothing. Let's see if we... Huh, nothing at all. Wow. I wonder if the fuse is broke again. Up here the fuse is probably broken. Let's check that out. So you can see the fuse box in there. Crusty looking. The first one is for ignition. Let's check that one out first. That one is blown, it looks like. Actually, that one's fine. That one looks fine. Ignition looks fine. Uh oh. Second ones are for lights. That one looks fine. Oh boy. Third one is for ACC. Ha <laughs> None of these are broken or anything. Maybe they were just dirty. Let's see. Nothing happening. All right, nothing is working on this thing. Um, but I just connected it manually. Check this out. Turn it to on. And the engine should spin over. Oh, nope. Solenoid just clicking. Oh, and no power. I don't know. Very weird. We're getting enough power to the solenoid. It's just not turning it over. Right, so we're getting 14 volts to the solenoid. I uh, checked it with the voltmeter at this terminal going down to the starter. So I think the starter is crap on this thing. Um, and we're not getting any power to the lights. I don't think the lights are burnt out. So we took the switch apart right here. Just gonna kind of look in there. See what's going on. Spray some WD-40 in there. Just kind of work it around. See if we can get that stuff to free up a bit. See if the lights flicker on. And the new the neutral light did come on for a brief second before, so I know it works. All right, we've got lights. Let's see if the low works on too. Cool. 
All right, so there is a gray wire going to the switch up here that wasn't getting positive fed to them. So I followed the gray wire all the way over to here. And the gray wire needed to be hooked up to positive down here. And the black wire needed to be hooked up to ground. So when you ground that one out, that one needs to be hooked up to positive. And then we should be good to go. So everything is working on that. And then we've got the light working on here as well. Let's see. All right, it's been about two hours. We finally have all the lights working. And we've got uh, the starter solenoid working. Obviously the starter's not working, it's just clicking when you turn it on. So that's all we've got for that. But the light does work for the, the lights. The lights do work. Um, I think we're gonna move on and just try to get spark on this thing. Let's just see if we have it. I don't know if we do because the starter hasn't been working. But what I'm gonna do is turn it over by hand with the pull start and we'll just see if we've got spark here. You guys keep an eye on that. So hopefully we've got some type of spark. The machine is on right now. Let's see when we pull it over, what happens here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we've got spark. We've got some spark. So, we've got spark, we've got compression. We've got to get fuel now. So let's get that carburetor out of there and start cleaning that up. Then we'll see what's in the tank too. Looks pretty empty in there. So we should be good there. Let's just see if the petcock's working here. It's going right to the carb. The gas line's kind of iffy on there. Ooh, pretty rusty. All right, we got this carburetor off. I had to drill out one of the screws right there. That thing was stuck on there. Ooh, she's a little rusty. It's like a paste in there. Pilot looks like it's going to be underneath here. What the heck was in there? It's gross. There's the pilot. Wow, that's really clogged. Look at that. <laughs> That would have never started in a million years. Fuel screw is one, about one and three quarter turns out for the fuel screw. Should be a spring in there as well. We're going to clean that out, uh, spray it out with the air compressor, and uh, reinstall and see if this thing starts up. Alright, carburetor's back in there. Let's get the gas line, which is right here, and check that out. See what comes out of the tank. I'm guessing a bunch of rust. Oh man. Powder's coming out of it right now. There's reserve right there. Oh, it's actually pretty clear. Wow, that's surprising. I think this is a plastic tank, so there's no reason it shouldn't be clear. But it looks like water. Let's 
super clear. It's definitely water. Look at the bubbles for me. So we've got a bunch of water in here. Yeah, look at that. That's water. Big hole in the gas cap. That's why water got in it. Let that drain for a little bit. Come back and uh, fill it up with gas. We've got some gas going to it. Um, it looks like the gas line is all cracked. So I need to get a filter and gas line, but let's just test it out for now. And the carburetor's leaking a little bit. I think it's the O-ring gasket um, on the seat. I had that on the last one too. But let's just see if she fires up with the pull start. Hopefully she does. All right, she runs pretty good. Look at all the nuts this thing popped out of the exhaust. <laughs> that thing is probably just packed full of them. But uh, they'll come out as soon as we start it up. Um, yeah, she runs pretty good. We just have to hook up the gas line, get a filter on this thing, get the air filter back in, and then we gotta check the oil. Make sure there's some oil in there. It doesn't look like there's anything in there right now. Quarter of the way full. So we definitely have to fill that up and then hook up the battery and uh, get all the plastics on. This thing should be good to go. Alright, let's add some oil to this thing. We've got 10 W40. We probably only need one quart added. Can't top it off for now. And we'll ride it and see how it goes. Put half a quart in and check it. See where we're at. Oh, that's already high enough. So on the window over here, you can see we're all the way up to the top line now. So oil is good right there. Alright, I gotta take the carburetor out again and uh, put a new seal in there. Alright, so it looks like miraculously the starter started working. See if we can crank it over. Neutral light came on as well. Only sometimes. Must be finicky. Alright, so let's see if it starts easier with the decompression mechanism. Pulled in. So 
the starter works now. That is awesome. All right, we've got it running perfectly here. Sounds pretty good. No smoke. I spent the last hour cleaning this thing. I scrubbed the plastics. That's as good as we're going to get them. So, looks a little bit better than it was. The seat's all ripped. Really can't do much about that. Um, and then the panel right here is missing. Can't really do much about that. We're gonna have to find one online. They're really hard to find though. But everything else looks good. Front brakes work on it. Rear brakes do not work. But uh, I'm not even going to mess with it. So, everything is working on it. she moves goes into gear let's go load her up and uh, take it for a little rip Runs pretty good. Suspension feels good. Front brakes work well. It's actually not bad. Not bad at all. What do we have into this thing? We got a new coil that was like 30 bucks, so got about 500 bucks into it. Hmm, 450. Probably four, yeah, right around 450, 455. It's not too bad. All right, so it's about 7:30 right now. I've been working on this thing since about probably 10, 10.30. So I've got a lot of hours into this thing. Too many, way too many. Does electric start work yet? Oh yeah, baby. So, so the charging system's working because electric start's not working. That's sweet. That's a win. <laughs> I do feel like my filter is being a little bit restrictive. Feels like my brake is on or something.
Yeah, it's backfiring just a little bit. I think she's running a little bit lean. For some reason, I don't think it's getting enough fuel. I think that fuel filter is getting clogged. What the heck just happened there? Something came up and hit something. Holy crap. Oh, the battery fell off. <laughs> it ripped it right off. Holy cow. I think that's what I was hearing. Jeez. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Look at there. The battery, the battery fell right out of it. That sucks. That really sucks a lot. It just ripped it right out. Look at this. Holy cow. Look at that thing. The terminal just ripped right off of it. Holy cow. That really sucks. How am I going to get back now? Jeez. I wonder if I can fab something up to make this thing run. Yeah, we were going a little bit too hard on the trails for that battery. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm just happy we're able to make it back home. Lights are working too. I did spend how many hours on it, so it should work. Alright, let's fix this thing. Right back in action here. going pretty good. We've got the choke on, but that's okay. Almost like the exhaust is clogged up a little bit. There we go. It's clearing out now. go. Now it's going good. Now we've got the speed we're looking for. Cool.
look at the deer. Oh, look at the babies. <laughs> He's just staring at me. That's crazy. Probably 30 feet away. There they go. <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty cool. They just stood there and watched me. Probably run into him over here again. Oh, there they are. There they are, running down the path. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, there's one in the path right there. That looked like a buck. There's a path back here we can take. goes through there, let's see. First ride went really well. Besides the battery falling off, but uh, it's running really good. Thing idles perfectly, goes through the gears, no leaking, it's actually not that bad. But uh, that wraps up today's video, hope you guys enjoyed, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I've got like, what do I have into this thing? Um, about nine and a half hours of work, but uh, it was worth it, because it runs great. That wiring was just a huge mess. That's what, that's what took the longest amount of time. Stay tuned for the next one, and until next time, we are open.